Welcome back, my dear students who are watching this program. So, in fact, uh, we were on the in the on the way of uh, discussing a few questions from uh, grade 10 physics, 10 standard physics. So, I promise that we will be doing some questions from 11th as well, but we will quickly go through a few more questions from 10th standard uh, after which we will get back to 11th. Okay? So, because uh, some questions, uh, if again from the questions, if you have any count confusions, you can call us. Okay? So, before the break, I had asked you one question. You can, uh, the question was this way. When two resistors, okay, when connected in parallel, it gives an effective resistance of 2 ohms. But if they are in series, the effective resistance is 9 ohms. Okay, the question is calculate the individual resistances. See, R1 is how much, R2 is how much. This is the question. Right, so how do you do it? We know the equation for the resistance in series. What is the effective resistance equation? We have RS is R1 plus R2, that is the effective resistance. Right, so we can say therefore 9 is what is R1 plus R2. Whereas in parallel combination, what is the equation? We have the equation R1 R2 by R1 plus R2. This is the equation for, ca for calculating the effective resistance in parallel. But that is given as how many ohms? 2 ohms. 2 ohms is the effective resistance in parallel combination. Okay? So, this we have. Therefore, but R1 plus R2 already we know it is 9 ohms. Right? So, we substitute that 9 ohm over, 9 over here. Therefore, we can write 2 is equal to R1 R2 divided by 9. Therefore, what will be R1 into R2? That is R1 multiplied by R2 is 18. 18. So, R1 plus R2 is 9. R1 multiplied by R2 is 18. So, which all numbers they are? That is the sum of the two numbers is 9, where the product is 18. Which are the two numbers? No, it is 6 and 3 ohms. 6 plus 3 is 9, 6 into 3 is 18. All right. So, one resistance is 6 ohms and the second resistance is 3 ohms. Right? This is the answer. One second, I will tell you about the question. Two resistors when connected in parallel give this much resistance and when they, when they are in series, it gives 9 ohms. Okay? So, what will be the value of effective, uh, sorry, the individual resistances R1 and R2. Okay? R1 plus R2 is 9 and this is 2. So, you can calculate it in this way. Product is 18 and sum is 9. Okay? So, simple. So, now look at the next question. See the question on the board, on the screen. Determine the effective or equivalent resistance between x and y in the following circuit. Okay, here 1 is uh, missing. It is actually 1 ohm uh, resistance is there on the top. Okay, 5 ohm, 8 ohms, you take this as 1 ohm. This is 1 ohm, this is 3 ohms. 3 ohms, 1 ohms. So, I will just uh, give you the way how to solve. As I told you, we will just quickly go through a few questions. See, we have to find out the effective resistance between x and y. So, what is the method? You know, from this, you can make out these two resistors are in series. Right? So, what will be the effective resistance between these two? 5 and 1 in series. So, 6 ohms. Similarly, 3 and 1 in series. So, 3 plus 1, 4. Right? So, we may draw it like this. There is a resistance of 6 ohms. This is x, this is y. Then there is a resistance of uh, 8 ohms. Okay? So, this you can assume like this, parallel. And this resistance is 4 ohms. So, what will be the effective resistance between x and uh, y? Then now, we can consider the, the it is a, a combination, parallel combination of 3 resistors. So, 1 by Rp is equal to what? 1 by 6 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 4. Okay? So, this will give you solve it and find out the value of effective resistance in parallel combination. You understood? So, I look at the diagram. This is the diagram given and the question is to find the equivalent resistance between x and y. Okay? It simply shows that these two are in series, these two are also in series, then all are in parallel. Hope it is clear then you can calculate using this. Right? Now, you move on to the next question. Look at the next question. A metallic wire has a resistance of 1 ohm per meter. Find the total resistance 4 times its length. I will tell you the answer as well. 4 times, just have a look at the question once again. Total resistance of 4 times length means 4 ohms. Correct? 1 ohm per meter. Okay, total resistance of 4 times the length means 
its resistance will be 4 ohm. Then resistance of 2.5 ohm uh, 5 meter long wire. Okay, 2.5 meter long wire means 2.5 multiplied by 1. Okay, so it is again 2.5 ohms. Okay, then resistance of 6 ohm long, uh, 6 meter long wire of the same material but with 4 times the area of cross section. So 6 meter long wire of the same material but 4 times the area of cross section. So remember, 6 meter long wire means its resistance is supposed to be 6 into 1 per meter, but one more thing is given 4 times the area of cross section. So, when area of cross section is uh, becoming 4 times the resistance will become 1 fourth correct because inversely proportional I mentioned at the beginning. So, divided by so area of cross section becomes what 1 fourth its length is 4 times sorry uh, length is 6 times ok 6 meter. So, once again length is 6 meter. So, the resistance is considered to be how much? resistance is considered to be 6 ohms provided the area of cross section was the same as before, but it is given area of cross section of the material is 4 times original area of cross section 4 times its resistance becomes 1 fourth. So, the resistance otherwise 6 ohms, but since area of cross section is made 4 times then the resistance becomes 6 by 4 that is 3 by 2 ohms this is the resistance. Okay. Now, next question once again look at the question two identical resistors of uh, each of resistance 10 ohm are connected first in series then in parallel in turn to a battery of 6 volts. Calculate the ratio of power consumed in the combination of resistors in the two cases. So, read the question very carefully two identical resistors each of resistance 10 ohms are connected first in series then in parallel. So, first you are connecting them in series second case it is connected in parallel. but battery voltage is 6 volt. Calculate the ratio of power consumed in the combination of resistors in the two cases. You know what is the same is see first case the two resistors connected like this across the source 6 volt. Second case these two resistors are connected in parallel to the same source 6 volt. We have to find power in each case. So, power what which equation we have for power and voltage or consisting of power and voltage, power voltage resistance the equation we have is P is equal to V squared by R. But the thing to remember is here V is the same in both the cases resistance only is changing. Here the resistance in fact, we do not uh, really need the value also because we just need to find the power a uh, ratio of the powers. Okay. So, power first case V squared by if I take this as R, R plus R, R you take as 10. Right. So, here the total resistance will be how much r plus r that is 2 r. Okay. Whereas, in this case the power is here r and r connected in parallel. In parallel effective resistance will be how much r 1 r 2 by r 1 plus r 2 if you use you will get the value get the uh, the value of the effective resistance as r by 2 that is if it is 10 10 10 connected in parallel. So, the effective resistance will be 5 ohm. So, the resistance is total resistance is r by 2. So, what will be the equation now for power V squared V is the same as uh, in both the cases V squared by R by 2 that is 2 V squared by R. Now, what is what we require is the ratio P 1 by P 2 you just divide this by this this by this V squared by R will get cancelled off correct V P 1 1 by 2 P 2 is 2. So, 2 will come here. So, the answer is 1 is to 4 the ratio of powers P 1 is to P 2 is 1 is to 4. It is a clear. So, you look at the question once again. The question was two resistors connected, two resistors connected in uh, the previous question, two resistors connected in parallel for a series first, then in uh, parallel, then uh, both to 6 volt and compare the powers or find the ratio of the powers. So we get the value of powers is ratio of powers is this much. Okay. Now, next question you see. So, look at the question calculate the voltage drop across R 1 that is a question the all the values are given. So, again all of you carefully go through the question we have to find out the voltage drop across R 1. Okay. So, R 1, R 2, R 3, R 4 4 resistors given 
all the values are also given 65 volt R 1 is uh, given as 50 ohms R 2 is given as uh, 100 R 3 also 100 and this is 300. Okay. Now, if you look at this, this is the question. The question is basically to calculate P D across R 1 that is a question. Okay, first thing while for finding P D potential difference what all things you will need V is equal to I R. We need resistance right we need current. Resistance is given as 50 ohms that is there. So, we want P D across R 1 let me say, uh, write it as V 1 and what else we need we need uh, the value of current through it that is this battery is what is delivering current. But always remember whenever you go to calculate current in a circuit always you should think of the total resistance of the circuit. Total voltage divided by total resistance is nothing but the battery or current delivered from the battery total current all right that is what exactly passing through the wire R 1 okay there is no division or uh, anywhere all right. So, that means, but now you look at the equation we got next attempt is what to get the expression for the value of the total resistance of the circuit okay. See 300 and 100 are in series. So, what will be the effective resistance? 300 plus 100 that is 400 uh, correct this is 400. Now, I will tell you the method 400 and 100 are in parallel right 400 is this one this is 100 you just see use the equation 1 by rp is equal to 1 by 100 plus 1 by 400 you find out the effective resistance you may see that I think after calculating you will get 80 ohms. So, 80 ohms is the resistance of this part the whole thing. Now, this 80 ohms is further connected to 50 ohms in series the whole thing is in series with 50 series means what r 1 plus r 2. So, what will be the total resistance? Total resistance is therefore 50 plus 80 that is 130 ohms. 130 ohms is the resistance all of you understood once again let me tell you these two are in series. So, 300 plus 100 400 that is in parallel with 100. So, uh, you will get 100 400 parallel using this equation solving this you will get the whole resistance of this as 80 ohms. This 80 is in series with 50. So, total resistance is 130 ohms. So, 130 is the resistance here total resistance we you know total voltage is 65 volt therefore, what will be the total current total current is total voltage divided by total resistance 65 by 1 by 30 that is 1 by 2 ampere otherwise 0 0.5 ampere. So, 0 0.5 ampere is the current through this. Now, we can very well find out what is the P D across the res, uh, this uh, 50 ohms how much 0 0.5 or 1 by 2 ampere is a current there no we know the value of current through that is 1 by 2 then that is a current through this that is 1 by 2 multiplied by 50 is the resistance. So, what will be the answer 25 volts understood the answer to the question the question is to find the voltage or potential difference across R 1. So, we got the value as 25 volt first we found out total resistance then we found out the total current that current into resistance of this alone gives the total potential sorry the potential difference across R 1 is it clear. Alright. Now, one more question we will discuss from grade 10. Okay. So, look at the screen <coughs> two diagrams are there you have to find out the effective resistance in both the cases. Okay. The first case there are three res, uh, four resistors I will just give you the idea how to solve it that is the first case and second case. that this is the diagram ok roughly this is a diagram ok. So, all uh, 2 ohm 1 ohm 3 ohm 1 ohm this is 2 ohms 1 ohm 3 ohm. Anyway, I uh, will tell you the method the A and B between A and B you have to find the effective resistance see here from this diagram 4 and 4 in parallel. So, what is the effective resistance 4 and 4 parallel means effective resistance is 2 2 2 2 in series 2 the whole 2 2 series. So, answer to this is <coughs> sorry 6 ohms is the effective resistance correct. 
2 2 2 is clear. Whereas, in this diagram see this is uh, kept like this, but at the same time you can make out one thing that is all are simply connected one after the other. Even if it is bent like this one end to end connection only that means what kind of connection it is just series connection. Series connection means we just uh, add the resistances right 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 all right just add them 3 plus 3 6 plus 3 9 plus on 10 13. So, total resistance is 13 ohms right that is the uh, case of some of the questions from the grade 10. So, now as I mentioned at the beginning if any questions you have from grade 10 students if you have any questions you can call and uh, ask I will explain the your doubts ok. Now, we will move on to some of the questions from grade 11 ok. So, look at the first question it is a question which is uh, from the second unit of the grade 11 physics. I hope you read the question a mass m suspended from a it is from it is not form suspended from a fixed point by a string of length l is made to rotate around a vertical around vertical with an angular velocity omega. Show that the angle of the string with the vertical is this much that is we have to prove this equation alpha is equal to cos inverse g by omega square l ok. So, my dear uh, students we are doing some questions from grade 11 portions more questions we will discuss on, a, on another day, but as far as possible uh, we will see some of them right uh, right. So, first question um, I think you understood the question the question it is this way that is a mass m is suspended from a fixed point by a string of length l and it is made to rotate about the vertical with an just like this it is rotated right. So, this is the way it is suspended and it is rotated like this right. We have to prove that the angle it makes with the vertical that is suppose this is the initial position it is rotated making an angle alpha. The angle it makes with the vertical can be calculated using this equation alpha is given by alpha is equal to cos inverse g by omega square l l is the length of the string ok. Let us see how. So, first thing you know this is a string while it is rotating this is the bob ok it is rotating like this see in a path in this way ok r is the radius of the path let us say l is the length of the string and it is rotated with an angular speed omega ok omega that is given this is the fixed point. Where to begin with this you know the on this bob on the mass which all forces act over here what all forces you can draw one force is the weight itself acting downwards another force is what you call as tension of the string ok tension then m g weight. Now, what else is look if this is alpha this is tension ok if this is alpha this angle also will be alpha right alternate interior angles they are alpha uh, they both are alpha. So, you may resolve this t into two components this is t cos alpha this weight is t sin alpha. So, from the diagram if you closely observe the diagram we can make out one thing. So, carefully you see the diagram t cos alpha what is the function of t cos alpha the tension the component this component of tension the t cos alpha balances the weight right t cos alpha is equal to m g how about what is the purpose of t sin alpha or what does c, uh, t sin alpha do t sin alpha provides what for every circular motion there is a force requirement the requirement of the force which force that force is what is termed as centripetal force right. So, centripetal force is provided by t sin alpha. So, there is a force available you know centripetal force I uh, once I mentioned about that centripetal force is not exactly a new force or what you say it is not an available force actually 
Instead, what is centripetal force? It is the requirement of a force. Wherever something is to rotate in a circular or move in a circular path, it needs to be supplied some force. That force is or the requirement of that force is what is termed as centripetal force. So, here the centripetal force is provided by one of the components of the tension that is T sin alpha. So, we may write T sin alpha is providing centripetal force. What is the equation? What equation you studied for centripetal force in terms of omega? You studied this equation T sin alpha is m r omega squared. Hope you know this equation. T sin alpha is m r omega squared. How about T cos alpha? T cos alpha is balancing the weight that is mg. T cos alpha balances the weight. T sin alpha is equal to m r omega squared. Correct? Now, what I am going to do is I will divide this equation with this. Right? So, T cos alpha divided by sin T sin alpha. T T cancel. So, it would become cos alpha divided by sin alpha is equal to G divided by R omega squared. M M cancel. Okay? Hope it is clear till this stage. Right? But now I am going to because you know look at the equation we are going to express it in terms of cos. Sometimes you know we may have the tendency like cos alpha cos by sin. Okay, we will write cot, but that is not what is expected. You know we have to express it in terms of cos. So what we should do is we can replace sin alpha. Now again look at the diagram. Just think of this triangle, right angle triangle. From the diagram, from the right angle triangle, what is this sin alpha? Sin alpha is opposite side by hypotenuse. Opposite side you can take this length as r this length is L. So, we may write sin alpha as R by L. Clear? All right. So, therefore, we may further write that is cos alpha is equal to sin alpha into, right? In the place of sin alpha, I am writing R by L into G by R omega squared. Correct? So, this R R will be cut. Then what happens is therefore cos alpha is g by l omega squared, right? This is what otherwise you can write as alpha is equal to cos inverse what is a g by omega squared l. See this is the expected equation. Well, if you understood the question, so the question was a mass m. You look at the question once again. Just have a look at the question. A mass m suspended from a fixed point by a string of length L is made to rotate around a vertical with an angular velocity omega. Show that the angle of this string with the vertical is alpha is equal to cos inverse uh, g by omega squared L. Okay? Now, you look at the answer. Look at the board. The string when it is rotated like this, the tension in the string is resolved into two components T cos alpha T sin alpha. T cos alpha balances with weight and T sin alpha provides the necessary centripetal force. right? Then you this divided by this you take g by r omega squared. correct? So, we get cos alpha. Si sin alpha you are substituting with r by L. Okay? This is cos alpha. Then if you substitute it with r by L, r r cancel. So, finally, we will be able to express it in this form. So, in fact, today I could uh, do only this question from grade 11. Another occasion we will be able to do uh, more questions from grade 11. As I always mention, whatever is your requirement, maybe you want to solve questions, you want to discuss some contents from 10th or 11th or 12th, any class, whichever is your requirement. As I mentioned, always this is your program, it is a live classroom. So, you should mail us and say this is our requirement, this portions can be discussed or this question can be do. So, just uh, uh, write a line to us so that accordingly we would be able to proceed with our classes. So, today it is the time for us to wind up. Today's class anyway we are going to finish off. Next week again that is next Monday again we will uh, take up some contents uh, of grade 12. And as I mentioned if you have uh, what you say any portion specifically to do over here. Suppose in the class you find uh, found that portion difficult or you, you did not get those pictures clearly. So, straight away write to us, we will discuss those areas here. Okay? That is it for today. Stay tuned with NTV. We will see you again next week.